The future uh, of health and business are, are, uh, are, are more important today than they were 25 years ago. Going forward, it's going to be far more significant. If you ask uh, employees in any organization what their most important benefit is today or what's most important to them in going to work for a company, probably at the top of the list is the health care benefits, the wellness program. By 2012, based on our current trend, we'd be paying $30 million a year for, for medical. And that was simply was not sustainable. We couldn't do it. We, we wouldn't be able to be in business. If you really want to know what the breakdown of the cost is um, for wellness versus uh, dealing with uh, the uh, benefits in a, in a health care program, um, probably I'd say that we spend a lot more money on the wellness side than the average company does. And we call that the preventative. Uh, side and it, it's easy for us because we own a lot of construction equipment uh, we have over a hundred million dollars worth of construction equipment a lot of cranes a lot of equipment and th there's if if you're gonna have a huge asset like a crane or major piece of equipment that could cost up to a million dollars let's say you want to maximize the return on that investment and one of the best ways to do it is uh, the longevity of its usefulness and the best way to do that is to maintain it it's called preventive maintenance all right people are no different so we put a lot of time and energy and effort up front it starts with the educational process it starts with the routine uh, communications with the wellness providers and then all of the testing and the follow-up that goes along with it that identifies or helps us to identify uh, health risk and challenges and issues early on. The results are you have, um, you spend a little money up front and you get a whole lot of uh, benefits on the tail end of it. I would first advise business leaders who want to start a wellness program to think what it is they want to get out of the program. Chinbro's outcomes, for example, we decided early on that what we wanted was a program that would change at-risk health behavior, improve people's quality of life, have an economic return and have high participation rates so that we could see that economic return and change in insurance costs. And, and I think that uh, we've been successful at that. But in order to do that, it's required a tremendous commitment from management, senior management, um, all the way through this program and a, a very great dedication to the, uh, the whole process of wellness. If you don't want to be that intense, um, there are other levels. Uh, the problem is you don't see much economic impact uh, and much uh, behavior change. This issue of wellness and well-being, personal well-being, uh, doing that is much less expensive than dealing with uh, the unhealthy side of the equation, and that is uh, uh, dealing with these, these major catastrophic illnesses uh, that can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. The entry cost of maintaining a program and doing it right and getting people doing the right things early on is a fraction of the ultimate cost that you end up paying uh, when people are unhealthy. Mm -hmm.